Awesome. All right, welcome in everybody. This is the Westgate High School Curriculum Night for the 21-22 school year. I am Tim Cuevas, the team lead and the high school math teacher. And I will let other teachers introduce themselves and then we'll get started. Let's go. Mr. Brinkley, can you start us off? Hey everybody, good to see you there. Uh, I'm Jason Brinkley. I'm the Spanish teacher and the freshman advocate and this year I'm also teaching journalism. Schneider. Hi, I'm Amy Schneider. I'm the science teacher and the sophomore advocate. Mr. Kern. Hello, I'm Dale Kern. I am the uh, high school social studies teacher and I am the advocate for the juniors. And Miss Matthews. I am Miss Matthews. I'm the English teacher and I am an empty nester. I have no advocacy this year. And then I forgot to mention, I am also the senior advocate. Um, and then joining us also, we have Miss Novak. Uh, are you there, Miss Novak? Hello. The Hi, I'm Miss cool. Novak, Amanda <laughs> Novak. I'm the high school assistant principal. Um, and yeah, these, these teachers are amazing and you're going to hear some great things. I say this all the time. I feel like I'm redundant, but um, it's worth being said a million times because they are an incredible team of, of teachers. Thanks, Ms. Novak. If you do have any questions, uh, we will take them all at the end. You can also feel free to put them in the chat and we'll take note of them there and we will make sure to answer them when we get to the end of the presentation. We're going to start just going through our classes and what those look like this semester and year, and then we'll move into some other high school goings ons and then we'll have a chance for questions. Let's get started. Um, OK, so our fresh We've changed up the science curriculum this year so that freshmen all will be taking earth science and going forward everyone during their sophomore year is going to be taking biology with juniors doing chemistry and then my elective this uh, semester is ethics and science where we're examining uh, a variety of different ethical topics each week through or uh, science topics through an ethical lens diving into this week we were talking about mandatory vaccines through uh, deontology versus consequentialism. Sorry, controls trouble. There we go. Mr. Kern. All right, so um, everything is uh, pretty much staying the same uh, as far as the social studies classes go. Our freshmen are taking civics, uh, which is uh, the first semester is all US government and the second semester of civics is um, economics. So that hasn't changed, that's the same. Uh, for sophomores, they are taking US history too, which starts uh, uh, post reconstruction all the way to today. Um, but the one thing that has changed as far as my classes is the elective that I'm doing this year and uh, we're doing a project based uh, humanities class. <clears throat> so uh, this first uh, quarter it's music appreciation. And the second quarter of the first semester is going to be communication in art. And then um, in the second semester we're going to do um, some film studies. And then the uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do fourth quarter yet, but it may be um, a project that the students decide on. Uh, but it's uh, it's been a fun class so far. Um, it's it's a humanities class, so we're trying to look at the arts, whether it's music or visual arts um, or film through um, how do these um, topics how do they affect, how does art affect uh, society and how does society uh, change the art? So it's pretty cool. All then in math, I teach freshman algebra one, I teach sophomores geometry, juniors algebra two, and then I have a variety of students from all grades in informal math. 
Algebra one this semester, we're starting off balancing equations, starting with simple one step, two step. But as the semester goes, we'll keep revisiting this and bringing in new equations to balance based upon the further units. A big part of algebra one is functions, learning what makes a function, learning what doesn't make a function, and learning which ones are practical, even if they break a lot of the rules of functions. So we make tables for those, we graph them. We're going to be doing a lot of uh, real world scenarios, seeing how these nice linear functions are used in the real world. We also get into systems of equations, which is where you figure out where lines intersect. We do a fun business project with that where kids uh, theoretically design a product and have to come up with revenue, profits, and how much it would cost to make those projects, and then use systems of equations to figure out how much money they need to make, how many items they need to make before breaking even. We end the semester with properties of exponents, which helps us out the following semester as we get into scientific notation and quadratics. In geometry, we start off with some very visual things, angles and lines. A lot of it is things we might have heard in middle school, but we revisit them, we go a little bit deeper. Some angles we never heard of outside of just obtuse and acute. And we start learning not just what is a parallel line and a perpendicular line, but we start the figuring out the math of just looking at numbers. How do we tell if they make the lines we need? We also did a city project where kids needed to make cities that met certain requirements regarding certain angles or certain lines. And got some really cool projects out of that one. From there, we're going to move into slopes and triangle centers. Triangles have something like five centers, and it relies very much on parallel and perpendicular lines, so that'll take a bit of time. And we'll end this semester with triangles and congruency, which sets us up really well for semester two when we start looking more at circles and also getting into trigonometry. Algebra two, we start off reviewing something from quadratics called factoring. It is one that I get a lot of questions on from kids because it's really like on paper rearranging numbers, but in real life it has a lot to do with gravity and there's a lot of fun real world applications like a small helicopter that was recently launched on Mars where they would have had to have done factoring to figure out where it would land and how much force it had to withstand. So a very useful one. Inequalities and absolute value we'll spend some time with uh, before moving into polynomials and radicals and rational functions where factoring will return. Second semester, we do a lot with probability and imaginary numbers. Then informal math is a new elective for me. This year, we are starting with a lot of open-ended problems. Most of the days have been kids coming in, getting five or so problems that they need to work their way through that don't always have concrete answers before presenting them to other classmates. We'll also talk about logic, probability, and I put hidden math with an asterisk because I wanted to call it discrete math, but discrete math is actually like a college level really difficult class. So I backed away from that. But hidden math being things that we don't always think of as mathematical, like the way we perceive beauty or music, which uh, Mr. Kern and I are hoping to work together a bit on. All of these places math appear that we don't even realize it. And this is a fun class where we're going to be able to delve into some of that. Matthews. That brings me to English. Uh, for ninth grade, we really focus on novel study and working on the foundations of analysis, uh, moving into lit circles and giving more choice when it comes to what students are reading. Some short stories, some rhetorical analysis, and just some foundations of poetry. Um, tenth grade is where we really start to move into world literature and looking at different types of American literature as well. Um, more group projects are in tenth grade, working together, more independence as we're moving through this year. They'll kind of guide their own projects coming up with uh, the choice of their book that they will have. Eleventh um, grade, we focus on American drama for the first quarter, which has been super fun for me. Um, I think they've really also enjoyed it. It's a way to really bring literature alive and assessing students by Socratic seminar. So inviting other ways of assessment, not just paper and tests, but really talking through what those look like, um, having multiple opportunities for different types of assessment, but just being able to engage in conversation around certain pieces of literature. And then we move on to um, stream of consciousness, narrative writing, memoir, and lots of SAT prep. 
as we will move into SAT time. This year, my elective is English composition, so it's primarily for ninth graders who are not in attendance at FRCC for the semester, uh, where we focus on college readiness, skill building, where right now we're working on a podcast unit, which really hones in on those lecture skills of how do I pay attention to what's going on and pull out the information that's important. I think they are all enjoying that as well. And then I also included a list of books. I know this often comes up a lot, and so just as far as what I have in my repertoire of books, uh, we don't use all of these books. It kind of depends on the class and their ability and what their interests are. But as we move through the years, um, it might look a little different. I remember in the now juniors when they were ninth graders, we did The Great Gatsby, um, but that's primarily a 10th grade book. So we'll focus that there this year. And Mr. Brinkley. All right, um, so in Spanish, um, we're just getting better and better. This is my sixth year teaching here at Westgate, and um, we uh, we do in Spanish one with the freshmen. We do um, introductory unit where we kind of do a little sampling of several different things, activities, foods, um, greetings, and then we go into classroom unit after that um, before we get to winter break. We start out with uh, easier grammar of uh, like articles, the and uh type things and talking about like um, rules for Spanish speaking and writing. And then in semester two, we go into a clothing uh, unit and a food unit. They end the, the uh, school year with a fashion show, which is amazing. We just did one of those in the eighth grade class um, last week. Um, <clears throat> and then our big Grammar focus for year one in Spanish is that they understand how to do present tense conjugation and, and kind of how conjugation works in Spanish compared to English is, is kind of like the big grammar uh, focus for the year that they can do that backwards and forwards. Then um, in Spanish two uh, and Spanish three, I love the idea that we're doing the curriculum night um, after we've had school for a few weeks because I give the students a lot of choice in what they um, do for the units in the uh, in the second and third years to let them choose kind of the topics that matter more to them and the things that they want to be able to know how to talk about. I think uh, gives it more meaning for them um, if they can have some choice in that. So it's great for me because now we've nailed down exactly what are the ones we're going to do. And so in Spanish too, we, we started out with a home and uh, we did a project about guiding someone around their home and uh, then we're going to do a travel one where they can uh, tell us about a, their favorite vacation. Um, we're going to revisit the grammar that we had uh, in year one and um, kind of preparing ourselves for the big grammar pieces that are in semester two. Uh, so in semester two, we're going to do a restaurant one where we're going to beef up our ability of speaking um, around foods and, and um, conversationally around different food topics uh, and then we're going to have one at the end of Spanish two that we do since most most of my students are only taking two years. We do one at the end of Spanish two that kind of encompasses all the things that you might experience if you went on a real life trip to a real Spanish speaking country. So uh, what would you say to, to people if you were staying in the guest home and you needed to ask about being around the house? What would you say around meal times? What would you say around um, if you were at a work site and you were doing service work? What would you say there? And uh, and then ideally, if they choose a Spanish speaking country for one of their service trips later in the future, they can use all of those things that they did at the end of Spanish two. Um, then in the Spanish three uh, is elective, and so I have juniors and seniors doing that one, and uh, they also pick that one out. Uh, the, the units that they want to do, we're starting out with the stories and legends one. Uh, then we're going to do a uh, movies one where we're um, going to reenact our own favorite scene from our favorite movie in Spanish. Uh, we're going to do a city one um, where we're doing all kinds of things around going around the city. And we will focus on the uh, future tense as we get into Spanish three. Uh, for me, it's it's really great that we are able to be back and doing things uh, where I can ask the students to speak to each other in Spanish and, uh, and it's not over a um, breakout room. Uh, and so 
it's been a whole lot better for me to be able to um, uh, ask them to have conversations with each other during the class. And, um, and, and I look forward to more of being able to do that. Um, my journalism elective that I'm, I'm starting this year, uh, so I, I majored in journalism in my um, bachelor's degree. And what we're basically doing in that one is um, all of the different classes that I took that were related to the journalism major, I'm kind of crunching down those topics into different units. So we have different units. Um, we start out with like page layout where they design a magazine page. Um, we're going to ongoing, have a lot of ongoing conversations about editing and and looking for mistakes and being able to um, do editing marks. Uh, we're going to talk about news writing style uh, throughout the whole class. And we've already been talking a lot about um, opinions in the media and examining the media and kind of what what is being presented uh, the information that's being presented to us and under what medium and for what purpose and what is the information that is not being presented to us and why might there be differences between one news media outlet and another news media outlet and what are target audiences that um, that are are kind of being um, targeted in, in the way that we see media. Um, so that's our uh, journalism elective. Now we're going to look at a few other things going on in the high school and some of them in the school at large on these next few slides. Uh, first of all, Mr. Kern, Ms. Matthews, can you tell us a bit about English Labs? Absolutely. Um, I'll talk a little and then I'm sure that Mr. Kern will join me in this conversation. Maybe not. Uh, but English Lab is primarily for juniors. Uh, so on Fridays, they will they have English lab with me in the morning, which sometimes serves as an extension of English 11 um, or serves primarily for SAT prep. Um, and then Mr. Kern. Shall I uh, keep going? <clears throat> you can I think you're doing a fantastic job. You can keep going and then I'll pepper what in pleasure. where I feel it's necessary. Thank you for your kindness. Uh, Following my English lab, he, they juniors, we move on to Academic Success Lab on our Friday schedule, which we'll talk a little bit about later. Um, but then they have a second English lab with Mr. Kern. So what we, he and I have decided is they will alternate weeks. Um, so if they are not doing SAT prep with me, they're doing it with him. So they get exposure every week, building skills. Um, what we had them do the last few, one of the first few weeks was connect their Khan Academy account and their College Board account which has their PSAT scores and hones in on their skill deficits and areas for growth. So they are given choice tests in those subject areas that focus on those skills. So we have been working with that. Um, other times it's an opportunity for work time for English. And then Mr. Kern. Yeah, I think that the, the idea behind it was, um, correct me if I'm wrong, either Ms. Novak or, or uh, Ms. Matthews, but um, so uh, Ms. Matthews and I taught um, this literature and social movements class last year, and it was we had a lot of fun teaching it. The kids had a lot of fun in the class. And so the idea was to kind of expand that class a little bit and um, provide space for learning in the um, in the humanities, um, but really focus on like reading and literature. And so we felt it was a good time to like utilize the time for uh, SAT prep, which is like really, really important because of where they are right now and, and what they're getting ready to do as far as the SAT goes. But uh, we also wanted it um, to uh, to to be free and for us to bring in some topics and, and teach some lessons on um, some things that we're passionate about, but uh, also some things that we don't always have time to address because we're like in the middle of a unit that's very specific. We can kind of do like a like a one off day on like a specific topic. Uh, or we can dedicate it to reading for enjoyment. Um, so it's 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 a nice uh, it's a nice space. It's a nice time to have. Um, it's it's pretty fluid, um, except for SAT prep. It it doesn't. There's not a lot of rules um, with the with the curriculum with what we're doing. Um, and it's it's just a it's a nice time to to try to get kids engaged in reading more.
Mr. Brinkley, can you tell us a bit about service learning this year? Yeah, so um, we uh, we're doing also kind of in the wider school. Uh, we have some different com uh, community uh, organizations within the school committees uh, of the different staff members, and so I'm uh, I'm the high school representative to the service learning um, committee, and where we kind of are spending a, a time with all the grade level um, teachers uh, talking about service learning and kind of what is happening around the building with that. Um, so some of the things that uh, that we're we're also trying to apply is in our school as a whole, we're learning a lot more about design thinking and about how design thinking gives us a, a pattern and framework to for brainstorming ideas. And so we're able to use a lot of that now as we're developing ideas of what each advocacy wants to do for their service learning project. And we're um, in the beginning of stages of, of kind of gathering information and um, and brainstorming kind of what the different groups want to do uh, as we're as we're moving ahead. Uh, the high school is doing um, service learning uh, every Friday afternoon, and then each advocacy is going to have um, a kind of a, a, a general idea of what their topic is going to be. Um, but something that's happening also this year is is more incorporating of kind of subcommittees and where students that let's say like the freshmen are talking a lot about animals and and so there's the subtopic animals here at westgate animals in shelters animals um, you know awareness and so we have different sub categories that can happen within each advocacy where students kind of ha have their opportunity to kind of go after the thing that matters most to them uh, so that's exciting and and it's uh, and it's great that um, you know we have this time and we have um Ms. Valenza as a resource to, to be able to dedicate all the time that she does to um, putting together lessons and things like the um, environmental uh, career day, which was amazing also. Um, I, and we all got to uh, see different pieces of that happen. Thank you, everyone. And kids are doing really well with English Labs. Just want to put that out there. I know them getting to have that time to work on things that might not fit into the normal curriculum has been hugely beneficial for them. Also, service learning, it's fun having everybody back in the school and being able to focus on projects in a room. I know last year we had a lot of great ideas for service learning, but when you have some kids at home, some kids online, it's really hard to get the momentum. And whatever the year throws at us, we're prepared to tackle projects in any form, but we are really happy to have them here in person again, really making some progress on those. At the moment, a lot of the classes are at the point where we have started to nail down what problems we want to face as a class, and we're getting to the point where we can start putting out project ideas. The less of the what are we going to tackle and more how are we going to tackle it. So really hoping in the next couple of weeks for those to start coming fully together. Um, with clubs, a lot of us are doing a club once or twice a week, so we're each going to take a chance to talk about those. Mine for, gee, the fourth year is Dun Dungeons and Dragons, which is always my thing and always close to my heart. And I love it. And once a week, we have a group of six kids come here and we tell stories, we make characters, we laugh, we have fun. They fight, I think they're fighting ghost pirates right now. It's a great time. I love it. And it's a time where the imagination of the kids really get to come out just unrestrained. And it's fun getting to see what they come up with. So I'm happy, happy to be doing it for a fourth year. Other clubs can jump in. <laughs> I'll go next. Um, so uh, I am actually um, uh, co-leading uh, the Westgate High School Rock Band with uh, our music teacher, Mr. Hobson. Uh, we do that every Tuesday after school. Um, pretty much like what I've been doing is we've been starting it at 3.30 and going and doing guitar seminar with uh, some of the guitar students from 3.30 to 4. And then at 4 o'clock, we all go into the music room and 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 that's where um uh you know guitars meet the keys and and the drums and the bass and it's been a lot of fun it was something that um that uh mr hobson and i talked about last year but we just because of covid we were unable to do so it's been really great to to get that going and it's it's a lot of fun i look forward to it every week and then I am co-hosting Plus Club with Miss Elwood, who's one of our kindergarten teachers, which is a club focusing on uh, people loving people and 
celebrating the diversity inclusion environment at Westgate and uh, working towards educating everybody about how to have a welcoming environment for everybody. And I just want to put out there uh, that last week, I think Plus Club left sticky notes on every single teacher and admin door with sweet messages. So that was really uplifting. Thanks for those, Amy. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Well, I, I do a club <laughs> that is uh, not a high school club. It's for I do third through six uh, Spanish introduction club. Um, but yeah, there you go. Third through sixth grade are doing that one. So then they are extra excited when they get to join your elective. They know you. If others haven't seen it, Mr. Brinkley in the hall, anytime he sees a little kid or a little kid sees him, is the best thing. Like they they love that club so much. Hey, um, next up, uh, Ms. Matthews, can you tell us about Academic Success Lab? Yes, Academic Success Lab is my pride and joy. For So this hour is stemmed from the idea of having office hours when we were in distance learning. So creating this sort of space where we were able to work with students one on one was one of the positives that truly came out of that experience. And I think that being able to shift our schedule into a way that accommodated that serves us all really well. So the idea around Academic Success Lab is truly building self-advocacy around subjects and students. So we all as the high school team communicate with each other when students we find are struggling with a particular subject and we use that hour on Friday to really ask their advocate teacher, hey, we need to see this person. Hey, um, what can you be doing for this time? that is most successful to you? How can you best use this time? What do you have to work on? Just a chunk of time for them to catch up on work or seek extra help. Um, and I think it's been wonderful. Anyone else to add to that? No. It is. <laughs> wait, wait, it is awesome. <laughs> Something that I really like that you put into that, Ms. Matthews, was this idea that it isn't just us telling them, hey, you're missing something for me, come check in, is the entire basis of it is them starting to see, them starting by going online and seeing what are they missing, what are they struggling in, and then them having to write down, this is who I need to see, and then coming and finding us. So not right. just us helping them with the time, but really pushing for them to kind of start that self-advocacy process. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Cravis. That reminded me really we have structured it in a way that made it so um, students are taking accountability for their work and their education. And so the, every week filling out what is my grade in this class, this class, this class and this class, where am I struggling? What do I possibly need help in? And then using their advocate as the person to say, hey, I need to go talk to Mr. Brinkley. Hey, I need to go talk to Ms. Schneider. Um, eventually then with the idea that they will say and take that ownership without um, without ne needing us. I mean, we're always there, but without <laughs> having to have. I, I, I didn't mean Lisa it like that. They, the we're, they, we're here. And the added benefit to all this is that um, it, it will take pressure off of parents um, because if they if the students are um, if they're going and they're seeing that, hey, I have you know, missing assignments for Mr. Kern or for Mr. Brinkley or whatever the case may be, um, then then you're the parents are not having to remind them because they're going on to IC and they're seeing that there are assignments missing or whatever the case is. So I, I think like um, getting having our students um, be more proactive in looking at their grades and staying up on their grades is beneficial for everybody involved for for teachers, for parents and for the students themselves. I, th I think it also this also kind of allows us to maximize what we're doing in our classes because uh, we don't have to we don't have to kind of give time during the class for students to complete something. If we know there's that academic success lab at the end of the week, we, we also can dedicate kind of more of the class time to, uh, you know, giving them the things they need to be successful. Uh, and, it, and it kind of allows for this idea of differentiation that that some students can get it done uh you know in in the 10 minutes that they have during the class and others can't 
And so that, that we have this ad additional added time at the end of the week that gives them an extra cushion of being able to complete those things that, that it might take them a little bit longer uh, for some of them to do, allows us to kind of do, do better with the minutes that we have in the classes. Absolutely. And one of the other things I've noticed, especially in my advocacy, is I have 10 kids all in the same college class and they are working together to help get through their front range stuff during that academic success time as well. After they're done seeing their Westgate teachers. All around a beautiful time. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Uh, next up, post-secondary preparation. So along with classes and academic success lab and just those general skills that will help students going into the world, we also make sure that we take time to teach them skills that may serve them in college or otherwise. Back at Back to School Night, I mentioned that we are going to be running some mock interviews and those went very successfully. Uh, Miss Novak for a couple of days taught the kids interview skills, what it takes to get a job, common questions that are asked, and she had a great lesson put together on even how different questions might look for different jobs or different levels of experience. And then we had some volunteers from the community come in for a couple of days and kids were able to meet with them one on one and run interviews and get immediate feedback on how they had done on. They would get a score based on how they answered the questions, but not just that all the nonverbals. Did they shake hands? Were they kind of relaxed or were they super tense? Were their answers long or short? all the little things that employers look for aside from just the answers to questions themselves. So we've been able to run opportunities like that where students can get real world experience. Another one that a couple teachers mentioned was Miss Valenza had designed our environmental ed day where representatives and workers and even CEOs from different jobs in the area environmentally related were able to come in and present. We had people, I'm not going to remember the full list, but we had um, a park ranger from Boulder. We had a representative from Meaty, which does uh, mushroom uh, replacements for meat, so like burgers, burgers and such made with mushrooms instead. And we had a lot of different volunteers come in to do that. And it's also worth noting that we got a lot of feedback from the volunteers that they loved how engaged the kids were. So thank you to all of you for helping uh, give the kids the skills they needed for that. But so also that opportunity and for some of the insur for, for some of the seniors that's turning into internships where they were able to make connections with the people who came in and actually start turning it into work experience. Um, so we offer those and as always students meet with Miss Washington when they're planning their credits. They can meet with Miss Novak or any of us when they have questions about college or otherwise. Miss Novak, do you have anything to add on post secondary preparation? Yeah, I think I'll just add, you know, the importance of post-secondary readiness uh, for all students, but it, it's it's recognized now as a skill that is sort of required for graduation. So it's now a part of graduation requirements that a student demonstrates post-secondary readiness, which is um, can be demonstrated through certain AccuPlace or score by taking a college class. So at Westgate, it's not there's less pressure to do all these other things. Um, but I think it's important to note that despite the fact that we most of our students have that indicator quite early on, um, that we still think that just having the skills post secondary or after high school is just so important. And that looks so many different ways, right? So um, having a seminar time every week, every there's freshman seminar, sophomore seminar, junior seminar and senior seminar. And that's a time to not only build like social emotional learning skills, but also to build that post secondary readiness to meet with Miss Washington to go over. Um, we've run a couple amazing activities just even the last few weeks um, with students about what does post secondary mean? What are you know? What are your goals? How do you know? How do you know like what you want your goals to be? How do you even dream about that? What does it mean to um, consider like college or the workforce or a trade or all these things. Um, and they've been really fruitful conversations. And so then you add in those internships that Mr. Cuevas referenced, you add in mock interviews, you add in college visits. Um, and, you know, historically and hopefully again soon, we're going to do more with junior achievement as well, where we can go visit certain workplaces and just sort of a day in the life of different places and different occupations. Um, but we just I think it's really important that the students see what is beyond high school and, and prepare themselves for that um, because it can be really 
it could be a difficult transition after a senior year of high school. So I just think it's a something that our high school does really well, and I'm really proud of the work that we do around post-secondary readiness. Thanks, Ms. Novak. And I just as a young adult, I consider to find I continually find those enlightening too. Like these are really real world skills. I think we benefit from them too every time we get guests in. Now, something that we started this year across the whole school that isn't just in the high school um, is RISE. Ms. Novak, can you tell us a bit about this? Sure. Um, so if anybody has heard about PBIS, it is Positive Behavioral Intervention Supports. And it's a part of MTSS or multi-tiered systems of support. It's a little jargon, but at the end of the day, what it means is it's a system and it's a framework to recognize positive behaviors in schools. Um, because when you, it's it's a part of like a discipline structure, right? Because we know that if you shout out like or notice and recognize four positives to every negative or every um, area where there's growth or disciplinary action or whatever you want to call it, um, it's four to one. You start to see the behavior change. You start to see growth um, without having like a student feel shame or feel disengaged. So it's really important that we do focus on the positive behavioral interventions and, and just the positive recognition. And the best way to do that, um, research says, is through like a framework and having specific things that you're teaching on a regular basis and then using that language consistently and then highlighting it with students and adults when that happens. So um, we use the student feedback. Um, the school psychologist, Dave Chermack and I, we did a whole child survey last year and we use that feedback from staff and from students to kind of narrow down what our what our core values are and narrow into these four words, respect, integrity, safety, and empathy. And what we've done is in August for advocacy, we focus on those things, like what do those things mean? And I have to tell you, the high school students have had really amazing conversations around it. I loved hearing some of the things like students noticing that integrity was the only um, was the only like noun, I want to say, like everything else sort of can be a verb. You can be safe, right? You can be empathetic, you can be respectful, but it's really about having integrity and having conversations around that. What does that mean? What does that look like? And why is it so? Um, and then being able to say in each environment, what does respect look like in, you know, on the front range, on the bus to front range? What does safety look like on the bus to front range? What does empathy look like in the classroom environment? And really working through those things and then being able to highlight when we see it, being able to say, I noticed how safe you were just now, um, you know, while you were walking out to lunch and you're going to the gas station. And like, I just, I noticed that you didn't hop on that skateboard until you were in a safe place to do so. And so using that language to then consistently provide positive reinforcement. Um, we're seeing a ton of success across the building. This is a K-12 initiative. Uh, so we're trying to really fit it into high school and, and be thoughtful about how we implement it into high school versus kindergarten. It does look different, uh, but I think that students have been pretty receptive to it, I hope. It's, it's a new thing, so I'm hoping for that. They definitely are. I think last week I had a student tell me they were determined to get one ticket from each high school teacher for each of the categories. <laughs> so other teachers, if you haven't heard that, we've got a couple are going around trying to collect them all. And it is it is fun getting to talk with the other teachers and students and the rest of the school too and seeing how it does evolve from one to the other. How empathy in kindergarten and um, first grade is just like smiling at somebody, lets them, helps them feel good, helps you feel good. And then you get up to our level where high schoolers are at the college starting to encounter real world a uh, smiling it's very real world my apologies adult struggles and needing to they learn the empathy skills to be able to relate to one another and really help one another both through the joys and the tough parts of life so it's really cool having the system across the whole school and seeing how it changes from grade to grade now the last slide is something that we didn't have last year with online, but we've been able to return to this year. So soul service is a time that we take last class of the week, Friday, right before we do our end of the day circle. And it is a time where we focus so much during the week on mind, academics, content, teaching kids skills. We also focus a lot on the physical, the body aspect of whole child, taking kids on walks, getting them up and moving on Monday, uh, movement Monday. Soul service is a time to nurture the soul. It's not academics necessarily. It's just something for the kids, something where they can really delve into something that they enjoy with people who enjoy similar hobbies for an hour before going home at the end of the week. The one that I run is student leadership. 
where students who want to have a voice in the goings ons for the high school get to have a chance to do so. We get to design things like homecoming and prom. They also get to talk about policies in place and any place where they feel like the students haven't gotten to have a say, they get to have some of that say and some of that empowerment and they feed their souls in that way. Each of us is we'll run through. We'll each talk a little bit about what we're doing. Ms. Matthews, can you start us off? Do you about soul service? Um, so oh, I do. Soul services. Yeah. Um, so I do crafts. Um, we do crafts. Uh, we started with jewelry making. We're going to do a t-shirt project. There's knitting and crocheting. There's time to do crafts. And I think the kids really enjoy it. I'll go next. Um, I, so we're doing uh, music production, which we started doing uh, two years ago, uh, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, it's we do a lot of um, uh, audio recording and using digital audio workstations on laptops and computers, um, basically like programming music, even though we are recording some live instruments. Uh, but it's been a lot of fun. I uh, last week I brought in my uh, analog Moog synthesizer, and so we were spending some time talking about uh, you know uh, electronic synthesis of of tones and sound, and uh, it's it's nice. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I I enjoy doing it every week. The uh, games uh, Soul Service is a spinoff of board games where last year we were doing board games uh, inside but now we've expanded board games to also include outdoor games like basketball or volleyball and there are mixed reviews about whether or not we should be going outside every time but we always vote about whether or not we're going to go outside and uh, some love the idea of going outside every time and others are not so excited about the going outside, but there's tables out there too where you can play Uno and chess, and um, and, uh, and we have lots of board games that were donated to us for this, um, and and we for sure will have lots and lots of days where we won't be able to go outside because it'll be too cold or rainy or snowy. Um, so, but we're having a good old time. With debate, it gives the students an opportunity to really talk and think through current events. So far we've done the humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan and how should that best be handled? Our next one is the Apple photo policy that was just released um, and it gives them a chance to really dive into and explore and have those conflicting views. Um, they always know whatever side they're taking, I'll pick the other side just to keep the conversation going and it really gets them thinking critically about the world they live in and how they want to change it. And peer mentoring is my pride and joy, as many of you know. Um, we started peer mentoring six years ago, maybe, um, when a student thought that peers and students in the school have a lot of ability to be strong mentors. And that student said, you know, our counselors would probably have a bit of a break if we paired older students with some younger students and created a safe environment for that type of mentorship. Um, and it's been going strong since, uh, except for last year, we didn't get to do it, which was really devastating. So we're getting to rebuild this year, which has been uh, kind of, it's been kind of fun to rebuild. We have new mentors, we're reestablishing our procedures, we're getting to really like look critically at the systems we have in place um, to keep your mentoring effective and comfortable and safe and fun and all of the things. So right now we're training. We had uh, we have new students. We have freshmen. I don't know that we have any sophomores right now, juniors and seniors. And uh, some of our seniors are interns, so they're also just organizing and leading the program and they are training right now. So we're doing a lot of a lot of just the training. What does mentorship look like and a lot of um, mock mentor sessions. So just learning the systems in place so that by the time we start working with K through eight kids around the building, they're ready to go.
Tim, you're muted. I gotta say it every time. That's part of like a virtual nice. meeting, right? Wow. It's gotta be a part of it. I haven't heard that in so long. Whoa. <laughs> Um, that is everything we everything um, slideshow wise before we start questions. Any other teachers or Miss Novak? Anything we missed or want to talk talk more on before we open it up for questions? I will say just very briefly. I apologize for not being on top of the ball with crafts. Um, my lights were off and I was very distracted. We are saving lots of energy by having automatic lights. I just sit in the dark for seventy percent of my day. Um, no windows and no lights. So um, with crafts, clay building with clay building and clay earrings and gemstone earrings became a hobby of mine over um, COVID. It was a, a way that I could get creativity flowing. And so I really wanted to create a space to bring um, that sort of creative flow to our students. That was what I wanted to say. That's all. It was booked quickly too. It was a very popular choice when they were signing up for it. They love crafts. Okay. Now we had a few people join us, so just letting people know a uh, reminder we are recording and we will post it. So anybody who joined a little late and wants to see the rest of the slideshow that's happened is where we go over curriculum that will be available uh, in the next few days. I believe uh, Miss Novak, where are we going to be posting it? I think it's going to be sent out directly via school messenger. So Holly Peterson will just send the link out uh, through school messenger to your emails. Thanks, Ms. Novak. So if you missed something, uh, this will be coming out. Uh, let's go ahead and open the floor. Any questions anybody has? I have a question. Go for it. Hi, Michelle McKenzie, Cash's mom. Good to see all your faces. I miss you. I can't believe that they are a senior in this year. I'm, I'm like, I'm having a moment. Um, my question is, um, Cash has expressed interest in not attending the Thailand trip, which breaks my heart. I really want to go to Thailand on their behalf. But um, he me they mentioned that there might be other opportunities for community service around the school. Will we contact Ms. Washington about that? You, Mr. Cuevas, Ms. Novak? Will there um, be a we carrier pigeon? I'm not. Carrier pigeon. You want me to go? OK, I'll answer. Um, sure. so, uh, so any of us, any of the people you mentioned would have been able to answer this question, which is great. Um, we do have a service, a community service requirement, so they will have to. Uh, I believe it's usually. 35 hours ish. Um, we, we do work uh, like under the circumstances, so we'll kind of see where things are at is, you know, I think right now there's just there's still a lot of questions to be asked about Thailand, which we'll get into in the Thailand meeting after this. Um, but that the, the number of hours will be determined based on like what's actually happening with Thailand and in Thailand. Um, but we don't provide all 35 of those hours here. So they could earn some hours here if they work with Jerry um, or T and we kind of come up with some projects on campus or Ms. Valenza, um, but we don't have those built in. So what we say though is that time is seniors don't have to be on campus. And what we ask is that they kind of seek out a community service organization that they can spend time at for a week during that instead of being at school. So we, we don't have anything for sure provided here. Um, there is no classes for them here, but we will help them find a really meaningful service project outside of school and or supplement with some hours here as well. Thank you so much. I'm I'm still hoping they change their mind and we'll go to Thailand. So, you know, fingers crossed. Thank you so much, Ms. Novak. I got to mute myself. Where's the button? There we go. Other questions? You can also put them in. Oh, I have a question. Um, so the service trips, you didn't mention that in this um, presentation. What are the different uh, grade high school uh, grade service trips? Besides now we know what the uh, 12th grade is. Yeah, um, I'll speak a little bit to that and then any of the advocates if you want to jump in. So historically our freshmen attend a local trip for one or two days. Um, it's, it's sort of normal field trip hours. So either we take public transportation, which now with the with the nearby train, we might have more access um, or we, you know, or we get a bus for a day or two. And so I know that Mr. Brinkley, when his class was freshman, they went to Salvation Army. Um, Mr. Cuevas and I took uh, last year's seniors to Adams County Fairgrounds and cleaned up. 
um, trash at Adams County Fairgrounds. Um, we've done a variety of things locally. Sophomores historically take an overnight of some kind. And so now we're so many years, two years of no trips, right? That's right, two years of no trips. So um, it's hard for me to even come up with the examples, but sophomores uh, take an overnight. So they do two nights of, or two so days of service and one overnight. And we've done things before at like Wolf Sanctuary in Fort Collins, but we also tend to have a challenge with weather every time we do an overnight in Colorado in May. Um, so we we want to get creative with that. Juniors historically go to Taos, New Mexico. We've done that since I've been here. So I think we've done that for we've done that for six years, but I think it's actually been going for seven or eight years. Um, and so we, we partner with Habitat Humanity for Habitat for Humanity for one week in Taos, and um, we we rent vehicles and we drive down there together. And um, that trip right now, I'm still working with Taos Habitat to determine whether they're even taking volunteers at this time and what they expect the spring will look like. So that's something that I'm in communication with them like as we to figure that part out. And then seniors choose an international trip together and start working on that um, earlier on. <laughs> Sorry, doing some voices. Um, can people just double check that they're muted, please? Thank you. Sorry, continue, Ms. Novak. No, I think that was it. I th unless anybody wants, has any follow-up questions or uh, Mr. Kern, if you want to jump in at all, Mr. Cuevas. Uh, Tina, were you, did you have any questions specifically about the Now Juniors trip next year? Uh, the trip when they are senior? Yes, for next year, the senior trip for next year. Yeah, really. I mean, that's still a year away. So I was really more focused about this year's trip and, and what's involved with that. Okay. We, uh, I, I will just like briefly mention um, that we, like we're still working on um, getting some more information uh, for the senior trip next year. And it's just like a work in progress. But I, I am glad that we, that, that we're starting to get a jump on it now because it's kind of showing me that there's a lot of moving pieces to it and uh it's uh I'm, I'm really excited about it but i think that uh as we kind of learn more information that's uh we'll, we'll we'll be talking to to all of our parents from from the uh from that advocacy so we'll let you know when we have more information i talked to you a little bit about it already but okay thank you Uh, we have a question in the chat. Could perhaps the seniors go to Taos instead of Thailand if uh, if or when travel restrictions go into place? This is one I have thought about, and I don't know if we have a solid answer on yet. I think a lot of that depends on what we find out from um, Taos, from our, I'm blinking on the company name. Sorry, Ms. Novak, could you help me out for Taos? Habitat for Humanity. Habitat for Humanity, thank you. Some of that may depend on what we hear for them as far as volunteers go in general. But at the moment, we are currently planning on Thailand. The senior parents are going to be meeting with our walking tree representative from Thailand here in just a few minutes to talk more about that. Um, travel insurance is a thing, and it is something everybody is getting in the event that, that that one is canceled. Um, but I think until we hear from Habitat for Humanity, we can't say for sure what backup plans would be. But we do hope that if if Thailand were to fall through, we will find some other sort of service that we can do in the area so that we can still still go out and help some people. I think that's what's most important to us all. We have just a couple more minutes. Any other questions? This is what we in the biz call wait time. See, nobody's talking, so it makes me want to talk, you guys. I know, it's wait time, Michelle. <laughs> Teachers are really I'm good just, at wait time. We are really good at wait time, but I've been out of the classroom for like two years now. And I'm just <laughs> so happy to see you guys. Ms. Matthews, I, I don't even get to like take your class like in the background anymore, so I'm going to have to send you emails and be like, what are you guys reading? We'll talk. Uh, if... I won't monopolize the group. <laughs> No, it's totally fine. I'm, I'll stop talking. I'm so sorry. Then send books home with cash for <laughs> Michelle. 
I'll send you an email, Ms. Matthews. All right, well, I think that's everything we had. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. I hope you learned something. Um, this will be coming out in a while through School Messenger if you want to revisit anything on the slides. As always, feel free to send us an email if you do think of any questions later. We'll get to them as um, soon as we can. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.